connect with. And it's amazing. Normally we have people from all over the country. And I think today is a Chicago day. Uh, it may be because we got so much snow and nobody wanted to travel. Hmm, maybe not. <laughs> but um, I think everyone here except for Jerry is from... Um, is from Illinois. Uh, we do have Kathleen that just joined us and she is caring and uh, caring for one another and even those we do not agree with. Kathleen, we need to have a discussion because <laughs> uh, you and I are definitely on the same page. So I see Mohammed. Mohammed, do you want to add a word? Oh, Jerry, I was born and raised in Michigan also. Oh, so wow. I was born and raised in Michigan. Well, Michigan was my second state I came to US. Um, my older son was born in Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> you want to find commonalities, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And Kimberly is and coming. Cherish the fact of wild. friendships. Awesome, yes. awesome. Anybody yes. else uh, who wants to add any word? Well, we are again. We are so happy that um, that you are all here with us today. We welcome you to unleash your free spirit, and it is a platform to really talk about our dreams, our goals, what stopped us, and how we were able to overcome it. And today we have an amazing guest speaker that I would like Guinea to introduce, if you may. Oh, absolutely. You know what? Uh, there are people, you know, uh, more people are joining us. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you know, before I met Jerry, I'll be honest, I would, I would think about branding as maybe your website, uh, maybe the color schemes, uh, maybe what you did. And then I met Jerry. And Jerry is the guru, guru of branding. You know, he has ears. Can you imagine? He's the only thing he has done is branding. So he's known as the big branding guy. Jerry is the guy who will really help you understand and he will help you not only create a big brand to create a strong message that sells, that you can get, excite you and delight you and ignite your market and make it easier to get new customers. And, and nobody can follow Jerry's act. Once he says that way, oh my God, you start listening. Jerry is the guy who has been doing this since 1985. Hold on my dear friends. 1985, he has sent over 100,000 small business overs, um, you know, businesses, and has worked in more than 600 different industries. I'm sure you cannot wait to hear from our speaker this month, Jerry Foster. Floor is yours. Go and brand up <laughs> all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, first off, I just want to say, Guinea, that I am hyena happy and peacock proud to be here. And I'm here in Los Angeles and it's around 70 degrees or so. So, uh, but, I, but I was born and raised in Michigan. And so my roots are totally in the Midwest. So the first thing I want to do is ask all of you to put into your chat box the names of some of your favorite brands, if you would, please. What's the last brand that you purchased? What's the name of that brand? I'm just curious. And let's open up the chat box and see what names you come up with. It could be Starbucks, it could be Apple. What was one of the last brands that you bought? Culligan, Open Nature, Kirkland. All right, what else? Coca-Cola, okay, very good. Any others? Samsung, good brand, Anchor. All right, excellent. Nature's Best, Chobani. One guy once said Day's Bread. I love Day's Bread, it's good. Airborne, all right. Now, the, my next question is, 
What made you choose those brands? What was your reason for choosing those brands? Just curious, if you would, please. Why did you choose? You got to work for Culligan. <laughs> the taste of the brand. I trust the integrity. Excellent. Preference, reputation. Because I was in Costco. Okay, Larry, I love it. Price, <laughs> health, reputation, non-toxic, et cetera. The ingredients. Excellent. Now, I want you all to notice what you all have in common in terms of how you answered that question, which is, why did you choose that brand? Write this word down, please. And the word that you all have in common is because. I chose that brand because. Some of you said the taste, some of you said the quality, but there was a reason for choosing that brand. And I think for a lot of us, when we look back on 2020, we can all recognize how tough a year it was for many of us. But at the same time, it represents an opportunity as well. And so when Guinea asked me to speak this morning, <clears throat> one of the things that I shared with her is that the theme of my talk is going to be how to make sure that 2021 is not 2020 part two. Does that sound good? For those of you who maybe didn't have the greatest year in 2020? And I was also researching and it said that, have you guys heard this? There's 1.7 billion websites on the World Wide Web. And it's even worse now because we're all gone virtual, right? And as Guinea mentioned, I've been doing this, this work my entire adult life. Real quickly, I always love to tell the story. I was at an event, Guinea, about 25 years ago or so, and there were 300 people in the room, and the organizer said, please stand up if you're in the same field that you majored in in college. And I stood up with two people. Three out of 300. And so my educational background is I went to USC. I'm a Trojan. Did my undergrad and graduate work at USC, two degrees from the Marshall School of Business, majored in marketing, deep study in branding, graduated with honors, blah, blah, blah. And I went to work for Procter & Gamble in Cincinnati. And so I worked in strategic branding at P&G for several years, helping grow some of their laundry brands like Cascade and Air Liquid Laundry Detergent, worked in the citrus juice and drink industry as well, and then started my brand development and training company, like Guinea said, full-time in 1985. This is my 36th year doing this work. Give me some love, everybody. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so yes, I did start my company when dinosaurs were roaming the earth. It was the dawn of the personal computer. I was 10 years old. So we'll go over and ask my story and I'm sticking to it. So I share all that for a reason. And getting kind of alluded to it. I read an article once which said that the average American changes their job or career 10 to 15 times in a lifetime. I've never done anything but branding my entire adult life. I live and breathe branding. I love everything about branding. And I do what I love and I love what I do. And the reason I share that is because there's a whole lot of people out there who say they do branding. And then you find out, oh, you do logos. <laughs> you do designs. Your idea of having a brand is your website or having pretty colors and photography on your web, on your web page. So the first thing I wanna do and what I thought would be useful in this brief conversation is to kind of give you guys some specific tips on some things that you can do right away to scale your business with your brand in 2021. Does that sound good? Well, the first thing is this, write this down. A brand is more than a logo. A brand is an experience. It's you deciding how do you want your clients to feel if they work with you this year. And realize that in the midst of 1.7 billion dollar, 1.7 billion, 1.7 billion websites on the World Wide Web, what we're finding is that it's getting harder and harder for what? For everyone to stand out and get noticed and be remembered because of how crowded the internet is. And I bet for some of you, you feel as if you're invisible. My forte is on how to brand services, skills, talents, abilities, expertise, because there's a certain way that you have to brand yourself as a personal brand as opposed to branding a product. 
So my conversation with you is going to focus more around how to big brand what it is that you have to offer the world. Does that sound good? And so the first thing is to realize this, write this down. Unless you're standing out, you're invisible. Have some of you found that false perceptions can often occur by you just telling someone, someone what it is that you do? People will put you in a slot. They'll go ahead and label you and put you into a box just by you introducing yourself. I'm a real estate agent. Okay, I put you into the real estate pile. I'm a financial planner. I put you into the financial planning pile. I'm a life coach. Oh my goodness, another one of those. I put you into the life coaching pile. Ever before is to seize control over how people perceive you because unless you brand yourself, somebody else will. And there was, a, there was a study done by the Wall Street Journal, with, and it basically said that the number one business building tool for American businesses today is branding, because we live in a brand conscious world. We go to our branded restaurants, we go to our branded banks, everything is about the brand. You go online, you read you look at TV commercials, celebrities talk about their brand. So you start asking yourself, well, why is the brand so important? Because the brand is giving people a reason to do business with you. And when you think about it, that requires more than the aesthetics, right? I was um, somewhere once getting in, I was talking at a, at a conference and I said, for those of you who have a hard time understanding that a brand is more than what people can see, that is more than your visuals. Let's take Coke and Pepsi. I doubt if the Coca-Cola people prefer Coke because it's in a red can and the Pepsi people because it's in a blue can. That's what's inside the can that counts. So my question to each of you is, what's going to be inside your can in 2021? Hmm. Now that leads to the second thing, which is this. Write this down, please. More important than ever before, you have to give people a reason to choose you. And that reason is around this word called brand preference. So if I go back to how each of you said you had a reason for choosing you, choosing those brands, my question becomes, what is going to be the key reason that people should do business with you in 2021? What we're finding is that the most, the strongest brands, and by the way, there's five types of brands. You can brand your company, a product or service, a nonprofit or yourself as a personal brand. And what we're finding is that more so than ever before, the number one key this year is to make sure that you are occupying what's called untapped market space, which means that if someone comes to your website, if someone comes across you on social media, whatever, whatever experience they have of you, they must feel that they can get something from you that they cannot get anywhere else. The key today is to have, write this down. By, by the way, I'm, I'm an old, I, I was an adjunct professor for 10 years at four universities. So when, once you turn 21, I tell everybody, write it down, okay? <laughs> so we don't forget, once you turn 21, get it, okay? That's a joke. Anyway, so the key is to give people a reason to choose you. And that reason has to be, has to pivot around you positioning yourself as being preeminent in your space. Now, the, the term for that is to swim in what's called blue ocean territory as opposed to red ocean, which means that you want people to see you as offering something that is unique, fresh, and original to the world. You got to grab that. You must differentiate yourself in a way whereby people see that they can get something from you and only from you. You know, in my 30 plus years of doing this work and having worked with, like she said, over 100,000 small businesses, one of the biggest challenges that I, have, that I see, especially in working with service providers, people who offer expertise, is that they're blending in and not standing out. Because what they're saying and what they're presenting through their websites and through their communication platforms are not really distinguishing them from the rest of the crowd. There's three levels that you can play at in this whole thing called branding. 
And the first level is what's called me too. The second level is to be me special. And the third level is called me only. <laughs> oh, me too, me too. A Me Too brand is when someone comes across you on the internet and they feel they can get something similar from you somewhere else. And the moment someone fe feels that you are a quote Me Too brand, you are looked upon as what's called an imitator, which means that they are now going to pigeonhole you, like I said earlier, and put you into a slot which means they label you as being generic and somewhat of a commodity. But yet, brands like Starbucks and Nike have shown us that the products they offer are less important than the brands they market and sell. What does that mean? What that means is that you don't want people to ever feel that they can get the same thing from you somewhere else because when that happens, you are now looked upon as being another slice in the loaf, another carton of milk, another penguin in the flock, and now you're forced to compete on price. And when they commoditize you that way, they now are basically saying that, like I said, you are somewhat generic. The second level you can play at is called me special. Now those, that would be for those of you who might say, no, Jerry, I'm not like everybody else. I'm different. I've got something that nobody else has. But the question becomes, have you truly differentiated yourself? The key today is to have what's called a highly relevant brand, which means that what you are saying is something that is going to move the needle with your target audience. And if you're, if, you're, if you're looked upon as being, oh, you're different, but you're not really that relevant, then now, instead of someone looking at you as an imitator, they see you as being an, an impersonator. And you know, it's, it's amazing because in this great country of ours, there's a history of incredible brands that were rock star brands that were, that were things that we had never seen before that slowly died on the vine because they lost their relevance. Does the name MySpace ring a bell? Whoever thought that Blockbuster would go out of business? Oh, yeah. What happened to AOL, Blackberry, Radio Shack? Look at the retail businesses across America that have gone out of business because of Amazon. Mm -hmm. And so what we're seeing is that so many service providers are blending in and not standing out because they haven't differentiated themselves in a way so that you can operate at the third level. Write this down, and that's called me only. Ah, oh. <laughs> you want to be the say, you want to be able to say I am the only humma humma that can do humma humma because when you're looked upon as being a me only standalone brand instead of being looked upon as an imitator, they see you as an innovator. So you want to be able to say to someone, there is no one like me, no one offers the kind of skills, talents, abilities, and expertise, and no one can deliver it the way I can because of number three, write this down, and that's your secret sauce. That's the way that you deliver your expertise to the world. You ever watch a TV commercial and you wonder why Chevron gasoline, I don't know if you guys have Chevron where you are. They say, Chevron has Checkron. So your car is happier. Why? Because Chevron is going to give your car better gas mileage. Now, why is that significant? It's because all gasoline is the same. They differentiate themselves through their additives. Bounty paper towel right on the TV screen. Bounty, the cricket picker upper, let the spill begin. And then on the TV commercial, they split the paper towel up and say, guess what? Bounty can absorb twice the liquid than any other, than any other paper towel because we utilize something called trap and lock technology, right? And, and then back in the day, remember when KFC was the Colonels? What was it known for, everybody? The original secret recipe. Remember that, the, that magical blend of 11 herbs and spices? So what's my point? When you are offering skills, 
You got to grab this. You have to give people a reason to believe you, choose you, and prefer you around the idea that you are a me-only brand so you can say to your target audience, I have exactly what you've been looking for. You can only get it from me. I am fearlessly original and I can deliver outcomes unlike no one else because nobody has my delivery system my process, my method. So what's my point? Instead of saying services, talk about your process, your method, your system, the path you put your customers on. Instead of talking about what makes you admirable in terms of your degrees and education and your client list, talk about what makes you unique. Build your brand around what are called your core differentiators. Those things that allow you to serve your market like never before, okay? And then the next thing I'm gonna say is this, make sure that you are scaling your business around what's called the golden triangle. I want everyone right now, please humor me here, draw a triangle on a sheet of paper and at the top of the triangle, write the word brand. And then the lower left-hand corner, please write the word market. In the lower right-hand corner, write the word sell. And it's been shown that whenever you're looking to level up, have more impact, scale up, the sequence for doing that is brand market sell, which means you nail your brand down first and then you market the, the <coughs> excuse me, then you market and sell the heck out of it. It's always branding followed by marketing followed by selling. And it's like a three-legged stool. All three legs have to be in place. If one leg is wobbling, if one leg is wobbling, you're in front of But it also suggests that one leg is not more important than the other. Branding is not more important than marketing. Marketing is not more important than selling. Selling is not more important than, than branding. They're equally important, but the three have to work together to do what it is that you want your brand to do to have the impact that you want to have. And the job of branding is to differentiate you. The job of marketing is to get people to pay attention to what makes you different, what makes you special, what makes you appealing, your why you. And then the job of selling is to get people to pay for that difference. Well, you guys missed it. You didn't get it. I'm going to give it to you again. You got to grab it now. The job of branding is to differentiate you. So you can say in 2021, there is no one else like me. I've got exactly what you've been looking for and you can only get it from me. Mm. The job of marketing is to now drive people to you, to become aware of you, desire you, and the job of selling is to get people to pay for that. Oh, you missed it, you missed it. Let me, Guinea, I, I gotta go back to Detroit on this one. Let me break it down this way. The job of branding is to get you known, marketing will get you found, and selling will get you paid, amen? You know, again, they call me the branded evangelist, don't have me preach here. You gotta get known, you gotta get found, and you gotta get paid. It's that simple. Don't get it twisted. And the three have to work together. You don't rely on marketing. You don't rely on knocking on more doors. The branding and the marketing have to work together because at the end of the day, we're all in business to do what? Be seen, be heard, and to make money. Wouldn't you agree? And so there's three levels to branding. Level one is called strategic branding. And that's where you lay down a solid foundation that pulls together strategically all the key components that allows you to have a me-only standalone brand. Okay, and that's called your brand strategy. And once you have your brand architecture in place, then you go to level two, and that's called visual branding. So in level one, the goal is to give your brand the strongest body, voice, and spirit possible. And then the goal in phase two, level two is to do what? Bring that to life visually. How do you do that? You assemble your marketing team in terms of your website, in terms of your social media, in terms of your online marketing, podcasting, shows, whatever you need to do, as well as how you're gonna monetize your brand in terms of your course creations and whatever, right? All of that gets developed in level two, but that has to be anchored 
in the foundation laid out in level one so you have what's called brand synergy. Because if you've ever dealt with marketing people, if they don't anchor their ideas and their creative suggestions in a brand, then what they're going to do is sell you shiny objects. Stuff. Because that's what marketing people do. And so you want to make sure that things are done sequentially, which means you don't put the tile down before the cabinets are up. You make sure that their work is anchored so you have synergy. So now the branding and marketing are working together. And then you go to level three, which has just emerged in recent years called social media branding. So now you're taking your videos, you're taking your content, you're taking the messaging that, can, that gets developed in phase two, level two, anchored in level one, and now you're out there and you're rocking it and you're making stuff happen. And now your marketing is going to be more effective because you've done everything sequentially, brought together the right way. And so therefore your marketing requires fewer impressions to be effective. $1 works like $5 and you get a higher return on your marketing investment. Is anybody listening to me today or am I talking to myself? <laughs> and let me tell you something, Guinea. I had someone who came up to me at a conference one time who said, Jerry, what you just said makes so much sense. I have wasted more money, time, energy, lost hopes and dreams on level two stuff that did not work because I bought the shiny objects. I put out so many of these coaches and all these courses and all these programs, I don't have anything to show for. Come on with me, somebody. Let's get real here. So what I'm the, so who am I? I'm the guy who makes you eat your vegetables? Because great brands are built strategically, not visually. Okay? You have to lay it down foundationally, and then you scale up from there. And one of the problems today with so many owners and so many folks is that everybody wants to get to level three. Everybody wants to get out there as quickly as possible. I got to get sales, Jerry. I got to get clients. I got money going out. I don't have enough money going in, right? They're just going fucking crazy, right? I hear it all the time. And they, and, and they fail to go ahead and, you know, they want to put the walls up before they put the plumbing in. And they think they got a marketing problem. And it turns out to be more of a branding issue. But they don't think they have a branding issue because they got a freaking logo or a website or photography. Like somebody's gonna hire you just because you look good. You know, it's interesting during this pandemic, I don't cook. So ladies, this is for you all, okay? But I've been taking cooking lessons. This is really funny. But I become this takeout and delivery guy. And when I do, when I do delivery, I use Grubhub. There's nothing wrong with DoorDash. There's nothing wrong with Uber Eats, but I'm a DoorDash guy. Excuse me, I'm a Grubhub guy. Before, before the uh, pandemic, when I was flying all over the country, speaking here and speaking there, my rideshare preference was Lyft. I'm a Lyft guy. Nothing wrong with Uber, right? So we all have what are called brand preferences, as I said at the beginning. So if you have a website, if I go to your websites, if I look at your stuff and I see you offering services, and you talking about, you know, what it is that you do, that's not probably going to give people a compelling reason to choose you over the competition. Some people prefer Starbucks as opposed to going into a 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven's got a great, great coffee. Why do you go to Starbucks? Oh, it's the Starbucks experience. My goodness, J Jerry, you have blown us up. I'm sure all of us are saying, I need to go and rethink about my strategy okay I'll, I'll shut up i'm talking too much <laughs> awesome judy so, wow. so yeah absolutely jerry we so appreciate the the nuggets you've given us today i love the the be only brand and the 
the Blue Ocean Territory. That is so amazing. Jerry, would you be willing to share your contact information with people on our webinar today so that oh. they can connect with you afterwards? Yeah, I'll put my cell. Um, let me do that right now. And if anybody wants to ask me any questions, we can do a Q&A. Well, we really don't have a whole lot of time for Q&A uh, right now because we really want to talk to each other also. But please connect with Jerry. Also, as we go into the breakup rooms, please put your contact information in yeah. the chat. So I mean, that I just, what I just, uh, one of the things that people find very useful is I created an online assessment tool that allows you to muscle test your brand where in three to five minutes, you can see how strong you are in 25 critical strategic branding areas. And if you text me your name and the word quiz to my cell, that's my cell I just put in there, I'll get you set up to take my assessment. Is that fair enough? Okay. That's very generous, Jerry. Yeah. Because you can really, because you don't know what you don't know. And the worst thing to do is act like you know what you don't know, that what you don't know is not that important. Yes. Well, you know what? You, you Every time I think of Jerry, I think of the branding evangelist. And you really have shown that today. And wouldn't everybody agree that Jerry has an amazing free spirit? Amazing. Amazing. Actually, believe it or not, every time I th I'm in front of Jerry, I start taking notes again. <laughs> <laughs> I love brand synergy. J uh, Judy, uh, we want to really honor our friends, our guests here. Let's have some networking time. Please put your information in the, in the chat. We want all of you to be talking to each other, helping each other grow your and their business. Okay, I got a it's couple of texts. Yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. So what we're going to do next is actually go into chat rooms. Um, and thank you again, Jerry, for that that awesome presentation, I really appreciate it. So we're going to, we are going to go into chat rooms and uh, we're, because we've only got um, 15 minutes and I'd like to go into a, a couple different rooms. So uh, I am going to break uh, everybody up so there's about two or three people in a room and then we'll switch in five minutes so you really only have 30 seconds